close. Fuck 19. Off. 18, 18 kilos. Ah, it's nice swinging a 19. Ah, ah. <laughs> 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 Fuck off. Fuck I'm going to try and explain why I reacted like that, because I didn't even shoot that fish. Fishing has always been a part of my family as far back as I can remember. I always remember dad would be coming back from reef trips in his big aluminium boat. My brother and I would scramble inside the boat, rummage through the icebox while dad was still half asleep. We'd be asking him all sorts of questions. What's this? What's that? What are we eating for dinner tonight? But the fish that was always the most prized in the icebox, the Red Emperor. I never saw too many people catching Red Emperor when I started spearfishing. Naturally, I asked my dad, where did you catch Red Emperor? I want to go there. I want to go down and dive and get one myself. And then he told me, we used to fish for them in 60 to 100 meters of water. My heart sank and I thought, I'm never going to catch a Red Emperor with a spear gun. Don't get me wrong, you can spear Red Emperor in less than 10 meters of water in certain parts of the country. But if you want to catch a big trophy size Red Emperor over 10 kilos, your best bet is 25 plus. Fast track another six or seven years, I start diving with a guy called Tim McDonald. We become great friends, we're still friends today, and he is one person that has an exceptional ability to dive deep. He's just naturally gifted at it, and he's always been able to do it. It's not something I've been gifted with, and diving deep doesn't really come naturally to me. And if there's one thing I've learned, he will always go out of the way to look for new ground. And I cannot count the amount of times I've sat in the boat, fallen asleep, got horribly sunburnt down one side of my face because he's just sounding around looking for small rocks. And that's where these Red Emperor live. That's what he's always been looking for. Tim's never been able to get a monster himself because he's so generous in the way that he dives that he always gives somebody else the opportunity to dive on a fish before him. And that's just the way he is. And unfortunately, it can be to his demise. I remember getting this phone call and Tim said, I think I've found some spots on the charts that will hold Red Emperor under 35 meters. Are you interested? So, of course I'm interested. I could probably get down and hit one if I'm lucky. We waited for the weather to come good and we were hitting the barrier reef. With us was an American guy called Hal. It was his 21st birthday. He was over in Australia for six months doing his engineering degree, but most of that six months was spent diving. After our two hour drive in the boat, we arrived at the first spot and the water was so blue, you could see the bottom in 20 meters easily. Myself, Adam, Josh and Hal all jumped in the water while Tim was looking at the sounder, sounding around this area. We thought we'd warm up, shoot some fish. Before long, I found a small Venus tusk fish and thought that'd be a nice addition to the esky. They are super tasty. After half an hour of splashing around, Tim was peeking and he wanted everybody back in the boat so we could go look for this new country that he thought was there. An hour later, we are sounding on a rock in 41 meters of water that is absolutely covered with life. The way we dive these small spots is we have two safety divers in the water, one person actually going to spear the fish, one person driving the boat, and another person in the boat to keep a lookout and make sure that everything's going peachy. I'm floating on the surface in over 40 meters of water and I can kind of make out light and dark on the bottom, which was just absolutely insane for where we were. Tim gives his final breath and a duck dive and he's on his way down to the bottom and Hal and I on the surface can't wait to see what he brings up from this dive. Probably 30 seconds into the dive, we hear his gun go off, which is quite unusual because normally you'd get right to the bottom, have a look around, but he must have seen something pretty special. Tim's coming to the surface holding his rig line. We make sure that he's okay. And then he starts pulling up the rig line and I can see this massive round fish coming up. I know that this is an enormous purple cod. For those that don't know, purple cod are one of the most prized fish on the east coast of Australia. They can be incredibly difficult to shoot and the Australian record is around 15 and a half kilos. This fish was 13 and a half. It was a pretty big deal. We can't fire our questions at Tim quick enough to find out what else is down there. And then he says this. When I look down, I'm like, oh, there's a big red sitting there on that rock. There's a purple halfway between me and that red. Big red. It becomes known that there's quite a large red emperor sitting on the bottom. A fish that Tim has spent thousands of hours looking for was sitting on the bottom. And Hal says this. There's a big red there. Bye, sir. <laughs> that red's freaking big. It'll stay there for when I go down and shoot it. I've shot heaps of largies and reds. Tim has spent a long time looking for these fish. The best part of 10 years looking for this particular fish. Hal asked if he could go have a crack at it and Tim says, sure, of course, why not? I've shot heaps of red emperor. There's not many divers in the world that have the selflessness to do that. 
Tim and I sit on the surface with bated breath as we watch Hal duck dive and head to the abyss, looking for that Red Emperor. As the fish materializes, I dive down to check the shot and get some footage. When I get closer to the red, I realize this is the biggest red I've ever seen by a long shot. When I put my hand on the fish just to get a scale of how big it was, I kind of realized that this was something truly special. I'd never seen anything like it. Forty, forty-one meters. Yeah, I had to look around for it a little bit because it was like sort of blended in. And I was like, oh, there you are. You'll see it on the foot of the right up to me. Just sat there. Bang. It looked like he was stoned. And I was like, yes. And, it was, doo -doo -doo. and I just tried to like fight him up off the bottom because he's trying to get on those rock. They're just fighting, fighting, fighting. Finally got him to swim up a bit and then I could just cut some out. We got this Red Emperor in the boat and pulled out a little set of digital scales just to get some sort of idea of how big this was. Alright boys. Oh, it's 18 kilos! 18 kilos! Ah, it's not swinging to 19! Donkey Red! Donkey Red! Donkey Red! It would be easy to mistake Tim's reaction here for jealousy or anger or just being pissed off about the fact that he didn't shoot the fish himself. But it was none of those things. He was just as gobsmacked as we all were about the size of this Red Emperor. How do you feel, Hal? It's perfect. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes. Good teamwork, boys. Great fish. As we were all drooling over this fish, the boat had drifted a little bit and we noticed on the sounder that another patch of reef had come up, so it was Josh's turn for a dive. Another area teeming with life, he goes down and shoots a bigger purple cod. This came in at 15.25 kilos, very close to the Australian record. 
So now with three incredible fish in the boat, where do you go from there after that kind of morning session? Well, we tried a few other spots, sounded around, didn't have much luck, and then we came across some flat reef. Because it didn't look like it was going to hold many fish, I put my GoPro on charge in the boat, jumped in the water, and managed my PB Red Emperor of 12.75 kilos, which was close to the Australian record if you would have been talking 10 years ago. However, it looked quite small in the icebox compared to house fish. The rest of the day was flat blue seas with more fish coming over into the boat. Tim shot a 12 kilo job fish, 10 kilo mangrove jack, and a nine kilo largemouth nanagai. I mean, fish that people dream of for years and they were all there on the day. I remember at the end of the day, the stills camera was flat. So all we had was a little iPhone to take these photos on on sunset. And this is all the memories that we've got. There was some amazing fish this day and a day that I'll never forget. When I got home a few days later, I remember calling my dad and saying, Oh, guess what? Guess what we shot on this trip? Oh yeah, I got a, I got a 12.75 kilo Red Emperor. Dad was absolutely stoked for me and couldn't wait to eat the fish as well because they are incredibly delicious. Then I told him about Howl's Red and the phone just went silent. You're kidding. I mean, line fishermen haven't even heard of catching fish this big. It's extremely rare. It just goes to show that even though you can have a lifetime and generations of fishing, Sometimes something special will still come out of the depths. The phrase fish of a lifetime gets thrown around quite flippantly these days, but this actually was the fish of a lifetime. It was accepted as a world record and nothing has even come close to it since. So what happened to Tim after all that? He's basically found a world record sized fish that he'd been chasing all his life and then let somebody else shoot it even after he saw it. It would be understandable if Tim was bitter and twisted about the whole scenario, but in fact, quite the opposite. I was talking to him a few days after the dive and he said, my whole definition of what is possible for spearfishing has been flipped upside down. I can't wait to get out there and search for something new. It just goes to show you that nothing is impossible with the ocean. You never know what's going to be down there. And that's what I love about it so much. Every time you go diving, you don't know if it's going to be a world record day or a day with no fish. That's what keeps me diving.